Hello everyone and welcome back to To Mars and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. It is finally time to send stuff to Mars. I know you've been waiting for quite a while now, but uh, we are at the Mars window. I've time more to it. Uh, it is close enough that we can make the uh, transfers work. And we are going to do some sort of test payloads first. We are going to send some supplies and maybe some test tanks with uh, xenon fuel or something like that, xenon gas to see what our stages can do as far as sending stuff to Mars because I'm not entirely sure how much star stage 2 can send to Mars or the hydrogen stage that we've been using uh, and still uh, in the case of star stage 2 recover itself in the stage in the case of the hydrogen stage not necessarily recover itself uh, but yeah so we're going to send some supplementary things and then we're going to send our crew up to our big ship and then get our crew out there and then after that, we are going to send the optional things, ISRU units and a lander. Uh, so, but the thing is, can we even send a lander? I mean, or are we going to have to assemble the lander in orbit in different parts because our launcher is the Orion carrier plane and it has limited capabilities. So, um, ISRU unit, do I use the one that we've been using, which is sort of long mission? really difficult to capture around Mars when you think about it, just in case you're not familiar. Uh, it's this one, and so this is the Mars version. Uh, it does have a lot of fuel tankage, but maybe it's not optimal for uh, as far as the shape. It's fine for the Moon, uh, but for Mars, it might not be the optimal shape. So I'll have to think about that. And maybe we'll send a more pod-shaped one so that it can aero capture around Mars. And yeah, so these are things I'm thinking about. Uh, one reason that it takes a bit of time for me to uh, get new episodes through is because I'm actually thinking, uh, I've been thinking about a new design for the ISRU system. And I'm always thinking about new designs. One new design I've thought about in the interim is the nuclear hydrogen stage, right? We've, we've got a hydrolock stage that we've been using. But if it turns out that star stage two and the uh, the hydrolock stage are not good enough. Well, there are very few things we can do beyond that uh, while still using the Orion carrier plane. And one of the things we could do is put the huge nuclear stage on here and try that out. But that would require the nuclear stage to ignite in the atmosphere. So that is a catch. And I've been uh, told that that is um, not ideal. Let's put it that way. But for now, we are going to try and see what Star Stage 2 can do. And our food, water, and oxygen that we've got here is just 5 tons. So it's not a lot. And so if we can't get this over to Mars, we're sort of in trouble with Star Stage 2. It'll still be good for the moon, but Mars, very limited. Uh, but we do want it back, so that's the sort of catch here. And the little thing that we're sending over not only has the aero capture, that's why it has the heat shield. But then it also has to have enough fuel to rendezvous with something. So, yeah. We've got those tanks. These are high pressure. I'm tempted to make this one a non-high pressure tank just to save mass. But we'll just leave it be. Uh, we've gone with hypergolic fuels because we're not sure about the boil-off situation yet. We'll fi figure about that maybe on a separate launch. And I was actually thinking of just sending Star Stage 2 itself because it's got a heat shield, right? But then it's not reusable, but uh, we could send it and have it capture on Mars, but then mostly it'll be an empty tank and useless, so... Uh, well, anyway, we've got comms, we've got power, and we'll see how it goes. I really need to get some of my other antennae in here, the ones I made for the RP2000 series. I did not do that, so... It's, so, it's always a thing that I have so many installs of Kerbal Space Program and so many different things happening at the same time that I don't always have the same parts in the, in the right install. So anyway, we'll go with what we've got here for now and see if this works out. Okay, we have lined up with the ecliptic more or less. Well, we've lined up with the moon anyway, and that's close enough. And if we want to do that for each launch, we'll basically only have one opportunity per day. And I figure the window is about two weeks. If we take a look at what Transfer Window Planner has here, uh, you can see there's sort of the uh, area where we have blue, deep blue here. And so any time in that, you can see that we're in that because we're at this edge. In fact, we could probably have gone earlier. 
Now the travel days are substantial here. But for our big ship, that doesn't matter. It's the same pool of food, water, and oxygen either way. Um, yeah, and they'll be doing a purely orbital mission unless we actually get the lander over and the lander works. <laughs> so uh, it's got to be risky all around. So anyway, throttle up. There we go. And SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. I pondered uh, turning the Dark Star into a first stage, just making it larger. If you've seen the Dark Star on in the flight sim videos or when I tried to make one for Kerbal Space Program. So that's a scramjet and of course that would be an interesting first stage. It can't get itself to orbit because you need to add a rocket. I thought about a scramjet aerospike combination. Uh, the reason for an aerospike in that case is because actually the back end is the same shape for a uh, scramjet and an aerospike. So it's possible to do that. But I'm dubious about the, the dry mass of the scramjet. But I might try that sort of thing. Either a scramjet first stage or a scramjet aerospike sort of combination. With boosters, probably. In that case, we probably have boosters on it to get it up to Mach 3. And that, that would be very much like the Navajo missile kind of thing. Okay, turning off a few engines and rolling. We're pretty well lined up as far as inclination is concerned. Um, if we were going to the moon, uh, it's not exactly necessarily the perfect lineup for Mars. It's a little bit tough to say. Okay, shut down. And separation. And over here. Fairings. Ah, uh, fairing, that one's on the wrong side. Okay. Anyway, okay, 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 stop. Actually, control from here. Uh, we've got too much rotation. I think maybe the mount is not placed quite right. Well, we lost some efficiency there for sure. Oh, uh, before I add, uh, this amount would have been nice right here. I, I like that number. This number I don't like quite so much. So if we look at it, we're gonna need three thousand eight hundred to get to orbit. That that only leaves two thousand two hundred in this stage for boosting the payload. That isn't much. I mean, we would have at least liked three thousand. That would keep this in orbit around Earth, but uh, still give an extra eight hundred for this. Well, we're closer to making orbit, and it is looking like about 2,000 meters per second that Star Stage 2 can provide. And, yeah, considering we're only trying to carry 5 tons of stuff over to Mars, this is tight. Uh, it does look like we're going to have to try and make sure everything is on the big ship. And not going separately. The big ship does have the benefit of the ion engines and the nuclear engines, right? If we're trying to launch something direct to Mars like this, we're using chemical engines and they're just not as efficient, though not as tedious as well, of course. Uh, nuclear engines and ion engines are super tedious. Currently, uh, given our launcher, the capability to launch propellant directly to Mars seems very limited, but we'll see about the hydrolock stage. There's there's a chance. I mean, what is the benefit of hydrolocks over methylox as far as trying to get stuff to a high orbits and Mars in particular? Well, we are going to find out, aren't we? Okay, uh, 234 by 206, and we lost a little bit on the on the flip because we were sort of out of control, but. Uh, yeah, call it about 2,000 that this can provide. Well, except we'll have to reserve a little bit so that it can come back down. But maybe I, I won't even bother with that this time. Uh, let's see if we can actually get the payload over there. I don't exactly know how much Delta V we have available altogether. We'll find out. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. How much do we need to actually get to Mars right now? Uh, it says 4,871. Well, I guess it's a good thing that we did a test, huh? 
Well, that's transit duration 160 days. Now, we know from Transit Window Planner it was expecting 300 days. So, I'm going to guess that maybe something is wrong, but this is just not looking good. And probably what, what we need to do is maybe go into a different inclination and that would be better, but it's tough to figure out exactly which one would cause an improvement. Uh, let me see if I can manually plot and make this better. What we want to do is hit Mars at either the ascending or descending node on the other side. I mean, we can see the problem here, the ascending and descending node. If they were at Earth, that would be ideal, but it's actually at a 90 degree angle, so it's not ideal. Um, so yeah, this is just one of those bad windows, as it turns out. If we do a mid-course adjustment, it ends up being 4,600 altogether, which we probably don't have. Now, well, there's uh, the barest of encounters. We're going to see how much we have altogether and then adjust. We're probably going to revert this one, and but we're going to see what we can do. I'm not going to try and recover this. And maybe if we toss it into a different inclination, it'll be better off. We'll see which way to go. So we're going to do some experimentation here with this window. Okay. All right, separation. And we actually want to follow this bit. Okay. Uh, it's got 2,000 meters per second in it. So it could finish this burn, but it can't do the mid-course adjustment. And incidentally, it was 12.6 tons. So just to get 5 tons of actual stuff over to Mars, the propellant we have here is making up the rest of that. And of course the heat shield is like double the amount that we're actually trying to send. But that is how it is unless we use some very special engines. But yeah, uh, as long as we've got this read, I think we, we can't possibly actually send this to Mars right now. So we need to see if we can optimize that at all. Uh, you know what, uh, instead of using this, I'm gonna cook up one with the hydrogen stage and we'll see how that does. So yeah, I mean, this is probably too limited anyway. We'll use the hydrogen stage and uh, it's changing two variables, variables at the same time, but we'll use the hydrogen stage and we will try to go into a different trajectory. So let me get that ready. Now, the reason I think there is a better timing is because, well, uh, we had a promise from Kerbal Alarm Clock that we could get out there with just 3,900 meters per second. So, yeah, and also take 341 days, but you know, the, idea is that we could just use 3,900 so it's just a matter of where exactly can we do that. So we are going to try and find the right inclination for that and we're going to do so by varying a, a close, we're going to be close to the original one but we're going to vary a little bit. So we're still going to have the moon as a reference but this time instead of launching here, which is where, where we did last time. We're gonna go past this. By a chunk and see if it's any better over here. Still daylight launch. Okay. Mm, I'm gonna aim camera for the first time. Okay, there we go. All right, SAS on and throttle up, ignition. And launch. So yes, now we've got the hydrogen stage with the four SE twenty forty Vs, and again, best to think of those as just more thrust RL tens or something like that. And shut down. Okay, separation and fairings. Again, all the wrong orientation for those, but okay. Okay, and shut down. 219 by 170, call it. And we've got 3,900. Well, this said 3,900, so let's see. 
First of all, what does Mechjeb plot if we target Mars here? What, is, what does it think the optimal is? Because uh, excluding mid-course adjustments, it's usually right about that. ASAP, 5,000. So this is worse, right? It was 4,600. So this direction is worse. All right. We're going to do the opposite then. <laughs> We're going to go in the opposite direction. And we'll see whether we can get anything better. Though there was, There's a nice patch forming up there. Um, I mean, it's possible that its scope is just not wide enough. Right, uh, at the top, the transit duration is 360 days though, so that's probably the most that we want. Okay, alright, I'm gonna redo the launch. Sorry, sorry. And we are going to go earlier instead of later. This time we did later. Last time, uh, next time we're going to do earlier than the moon lineup. Well, it's almost done, it's not quite done. Maybe we'll just launch at dawn and use that as a reference. And SAS on, crawl up, and ignition. And launch. Okay, shut down and roll. I mean, of course, the ultimate question of this series, in a way, is can a launcher of this size successfully conduct the exploration of the solar system, if you will, with with actual peoples going places. Or do we oops, so oh, I overburned a little bit. Uh, or do we need or do we need something bigger? I mean, how big do we actually need? Is sort of the question. Okay, prograde. Oh oh, kill rotation. Let's just ignite first. The night first acts ask questions later. Okay. Okay, and shut down. 244 by 223. Still 3,900 meters per second left, but the question is whether that's now going to be enough. Hmm, not really. But you know what? Uh, this time we're going to send it. Uh, so, it's looking like we're going to have to budget things a little bit differently. Unless MechJeb is wrong. Okay, well, let's create that node. This is a pretty quick transfer, though. So there's obviously not the one that... Uh, tra uh, trajectory... Uh, sorry, Transfer Window Planner was thinking about. And good thing we have a heat shield to capture, because that's going to be a quick approach, and that would take a lot of Delta V otherwise. We should have enough Delta V to actually capture it, but... And enough Delta V afterwards to have it rendezvous with something. It's just not ideal. Mechjeb does promise us that the next window is gonna be nice. It says 3734 in two years. It's just this time not so good. But then... Yeah, well, we'll see. Anyway, I missed the, this one by a little bit, so we're gonna go around again. Boil off. Well, we have some boil off, but it's not a whole lot. None of the liquid oxygen. Not really anything special going on except for, uh, for MLI layers. Okay, ignition. And we're off. Um, hold on, kill rotation. We seem to be deviating for some reason. Don't know why I was sort of wandering. Node? Okay, now it's alright. But yeah, you can see it's clearly an inclination issue. Now, when exactly should we launch in order to... Probably it wants us to launch in the dark. We should send a commsat over to Mars. After all, we do have comms enabled. We need a relay satellite or a bunch of relay satellites around Mars, it occurs to me. We put the dishes on here, and these are relays too. But 
maybe we can combine relay satellites with some other stuff that we can use. Maybe we'll put some xenon gas tanks with relay antennae or something. It's not useful to just have relays, I think. We should have them be multi-purpose, maybe. Okay, we are on escape. And we'll probably have to replot the whole thing. Yep. Okay. Apoaps is getting more extreme. Okay. Well, we'll just see when we get an encounter. Okay, we've got something going there. We have an encounter. Let's just take a look at what's going on. 152 days. Really quick. Uh, we'll do a mid-course adjustment to do the rest. So we'll have about 900, a little bit less than 900 in order to rendezvous with something, assuming we don't take too much for the capture portion. Okay, well, that's good enough for now. We'll have to figure out about the entry altitudes for something like this. Uh, yep. We'll just add that as the main course adjustment. And, well, let me think about what I want to launch next. I think we might just want to launch crew to the big ship and get them started. Um, yeah, I, I want to see what the situation is. We're, we'll temporarily ignore, because we're not going to be able to send as much support as I would like, it looks like, or at least... We'll, we'll see how much support we need to send. Uh, let's send the crew up and bite the radiation sort of thing and see what we really need to send as far as support is concerned because of our limited capabilities. So, next is a crude launch. So, we're going to try to use the Taurus space plane again because, after all, it didn't do too bad with the supply deliveries. And it actually came back down safely-ish. Of course, it splashed down. But instead of having supplies, we are going to have the xenon gas tanks. So we're going to send up some extra xenon gas that we need. And we'll see how that goes. And we're also sending two crew who will ultimately be the two crew that we are going to send over. I've recruited some extra people. Uh, and I don't know. Billy Bob Van is tempting. Uh, but Flo... <laughs> Flo is an interesting name. Uh, I, I almost want to make sure we don't kill Flo, though. Hmm. Lager Fry is a scientist, though. I, I, well, I mean, we should have a pilot and an engineer, I think. I think Flo and Barbert. Flo and Barbert sound like a good combination. Oh, and we don't want them on the access level. We, we, that was for Kerbalism only. We want them in the seats, so will be fine. Maybe, maybe lining up the St. Louis is a better way to get to Mars. Maybe we should try that for, instead of the moon, lining up with the St. Louis. Because the St. Louis is put in the right basic position to transfer, right? Hmm. Maybe we should just line up with the St. Louis instead. That's a thought. Anyway, ignition. And launch. Well, the probability of survival for Flo and Barbert is pretty darn low, <laughs> so I have to be frank about this. It is an interesting timing that we're launching for, I mean, it is sort of dawn, but a little bit later than the previous one. Okay, shut down, separation, and uh... Well, kill rotation first, and ignition. We'll deal with the particulars after we regain our target. Okay, and shut down, 231 by 200, and we got 0. 0.6 degree inclination difference, 2,400. 84 should be enough to rendezvous with it. It's uh, just ahead of us right there. We're we're over here. So first of all, let's boost up that periapsis. 
But it looks like the ascending node is in a fine position anyway. Well, that's just about what I wanted. So yes, we have the propellant as expected since we're using the same setup. And let's hop to it. First uh, minor boost and then the main burn. Okay, setting the fuel down. And here we go. The main burn to rendezvous. And shut down. Okay, well, let's refine that a bit. Okay, well, seven kilometers is fine. Let's meet up with it and get these two crew people onto the ship. Ah, uh, we probably need to start a fuel cell. Well, fuel seems settled. We're only using two engines for accuracy. Okay, shut down there. All right, I think we've, we've we're out of uh, RCS propellant on that stage. Uh, all right, I think I think we're done with that. Okay, so Taurus cabin those. Yep, we're just gonna fling it away. Off it goes. Totally a NASA approved maneuver, I'm sure. We have very little Delta V here. This was just supposed to do the final bit of rendezvous, docking, and then get itself back into the atmosphere. So, very sort of spare situation. With the xenon gas though, it's a whole 31 tons. So as far as getting to our ship is concerned, that's fine. But we only need about 2,400 meters per second for that. Getting to Mars is 4,000. You can sort of see the ship there. It's that line right there. Not easy though. Let's put the box on. There we go. There it is. Now in daylight it's much clearer. I'm not bothering about roll right now. At least we don't have to hand carry the xenon gas in. Okay, doesn't look too bad. And we've docked. Okay. That is presumably the maneuver for exit out of the system. And though, I swear I saw it reading something different before. But yes, let's first transfer out the xenon gas. And in. A huge center of mass shift as we do that, but okay. So we brought a fair amount. And now our crew members. Uh, let's see. Open hatch. Oh, the, the, yeah, there is. Open hatch. Okay, that hatch also opens. All right, we're in business. Um, let's make sure Barbert has supplies before he leaves the seat is the part where the whole pass-through system is finicky. Very close quarters in small cabins. It's better when it's a huge area. Huge volume. Okay, Barbert has a tool equipped. Those are two EVA tanks. Maybe I should have Barbert grab one. I don't know how much EVA propellant we're gonna need, but It's pretty light, so we might as well get it. I'm guessing they figured it was nitrogen or something. Okay, through the endurance module. Again, the supplies will be behind the lockers and such. And, oh, we haven't opened that yet. Shoot. Okay, there we go. Okay, reorient. And find your chair. Find your chair. Ah. Uh, Okay, board hab chair. All right, that's one. Next flow. Well, get through somehow. Okay, we've got the EV propellant. Wonder why the endurance module doesn't have any light, but this does. <laughs> I didn't do anything special. And plop. Okay. Okay. Oh, don't bang into things. Board hab chair. 
All right, they are in chairs in the hab. And let's get the Taurus space plane off. Undock. I think we've done everything we wanted to do with it. We've got some extra supplies, but uh, I wasn't planning on transferring them anyway. We'll just let that be. Um, other way. There's a Taurus leaving. We could probably do something with that view if I was inclined to be artistic about it. Just... The hatch is its own part, so we have to find it in order to close it. Maybe if I had a whole bunch of action groups ahead of time. Right now I can't assign it because I can't actually click on it. There it is. It's sort of tucked in there, isn't it? There we go. Close hatch. See, it's tough because of where it actually slides into. Okay, well, that is... Now it's reading a completely different Delta V for our transfer route. Don't ask me why. It was different than before. But uh, I think... Yeah, let's verify that. Let's verify that that's what we need. Doesn't take much to capture. Oh, okay, we're just a little bit off, it looks like. It is another maneuver there in order to... Uh, correct our inclination. So this lining up with this probably won't be so good anyway because we still do a maneuver there to fix things. I guess we're going to have to make that maneuver again. Okay, well anyway that's set up for now. Let's see about getting the Taurus space plane back. I'm just curious. I mean we could just abandon it. There's nobody on there but Unfortunately, uh, it looks like we'd be coming down on the nighttime side again. Because our apoapsis is very clearly on the daytime side. I think last time our first first dip was like at 75 kilometers. I'm going to go for 70 and hope we don't burn up. But, you know, at least we don't have Kerbals on board on this particular test. So we will see whether we burn up or not. Comms sort of an issue, I mean, because they are, <laughs> but uh, I think we can still use smart ASS either way, so we might be okay. Okay, we are in the atmosphere, let's see how it goes. Uh, we just lost one of the AJ-10 190s. I think we... I, I, the AJ-10 190s are... But, I mean, are often sensitive for some reason, even though they're really tucked in. I mean, if you can take a look, they really shouldn't be overheating. But we are getting overheating on the Taurus body here and the cabin. You'll see 70 might have been going too far, but I just need to adjust the AJ-10-190s. I don't know what's up with them. They're probably getting too much heat. Or maybe the body, we should reduce the heat conductivity because uh, I guess it's conducting heat to them uh, because... As far as them being exposed, I, I don't think so. Well, no, I mean, it doesn't look like we went too low. It's just the AJ-10-190 decided to blow up. Fortunately, compared to our 22 tons, it's not too much of the mass. Now, let's take a look at our actuation. So we're not using a whole lot of yawn roll, but then again, we'll have to see at lower altitudes where the atmosphere is thicker. So this wasn't too bad except for that one explosion, I guess. But I would like to try and get this down somewhere decent. Try to do some planning. Missing one of the AJ-10s is going to make it a little bit harder because I was hoping to get into a stable standby orbit kind of thing first. Should we take 68 kilometers? Uh, 67. Okay, we'll take the 67. Just sort of automatically got there for us. Okay, we are in the atmosphere again. Will we lose the other AJ-10-190? Well, body's glowing red. See, maybe that's why, because it, it was sort of receiving a lot of heat and conducting a, a lot of it to the engine. Okay, yep, yep, the other one's overheating now. <laughs> now, if it was a matter of conducting heat, it beats me why both of them didn't get destroyed together in the first place. 
No. There goes that one. Probably throws our balance off. Yeah, now we're nose heavy because, you know, there used to be some mass back there that isn't there anymore. So now it's taking extra effort to keep the nose up. Mm. If we could reduce the amount of stuff in the nose, that would help. Uh, let's get all the fuel. Apparently, oh, we don't have comms. Well, that is one thing we can't do when we don't have comms. Okay, we do have comms now. Let me try and fix the balance a bit. And we could just dump the food, water, and oxygen at this point. Well, the water would take too long, but anyway, otherwise we survived. Okay, so we're close to apoapsis right now, and I think I want to be a little bit more careful about this. If we make a note at periapsis, it looks like we need to burn off about 800 meters per second. And we're probably too low. I think we are going to go... We'll, we'll be a little bit conservative here just to make sure I get a chance at maybe landing this somewhere useful. And I'm gonna go to 75 kilometers this time. We'll see how much we burn off like that. Okay, so here's the question on the third pass, whether we can get to a useful orbit. Okay, we're going back up again. It doesn't look too bad. It looks about what I wanted. I mean, we can't ask too much better than that just from the atmosphere. At least we're in triple digit kilometers. Okay, so what we see here is our launch site there, and over here, some oh, right there is Cape Canaveral. So maybe on the next orbit they'll be where we need them to be. And so I'm going to try and get into a full orbit here so that we don't dip back down at the periapsis. And we'll see if we can hit either site, maybe. It's a long shot, but it's better than ending somewhere random in the Pacific. It's gonna be a long retro burn at periapsis though, and I don't know if we'll have enough fuel actually. Okay, maybe I should actually set it so that now within the time, it's gonna be bad on time warping anyway. Let's see if we have enough fuel to bring that apoapsis down now. I'll dump the hydrogen and oxygen. We should have enough electric charge for the way down. Consumption rate is 3.6 per second though, 3.6 kilowatts, so it's not trivial. But yeah, looking at the situation, I don't think I can manage bringing the apoapsis down like that. We'll just have to try and come down on the periapsis side and... What can I say? Probably Australia is our best bet, <laughs> so it's that again. Yeah, so close to lining up with these guys over here, but we just didn't have enough propellant for that. We should have loaded more initially if we wanted to do that. I just want to recover it, darn it. Space planes, I like recovering space planes. Maybe Australia is somewhere there, maybe not. I don't know. Well, we are using a lot of pitch, but it's in control for now. Well, I can't hold the nose up anymore. Um, I'm just gonna tell it to go down. Oh, and uh, we're out of propellant. Okay. We used too much trying to hold the nose up. And... Well, I'm not going to belabor this. We we will... Oh, I guess we have to. Um, no, I don't want to... We'll, 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 we'll let it perish. Hopefully quickly. I don't know if it's going to get through somehow like this. 
it is sort of in a stable situation. In other words, uh, it's still the heat tiles are pointing in the direction of the airflow. So uh, this is not a burn up sort of direction. Not that there was any way to manage that. You know, the, the heat tolerance of the top is not different from the heat tolerance of the bottom here. But uh, in principle, this is actually the right way for it to spin if it's going to spin out of control. Well, it did survive. And we have comms even. Um, you know what? Let's see. Atmospheric autopilot. Yeah, but uh, uh, there's a chance. Uh, no. Okay, okay, okay. We've got it. Okay, and splash down. Okay. Well, last time it was flipping end over end. This time it's sort of yawed, but uh, much nicer splash down this time. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let me just recover this. So, just in terms of supplies, they've got a fair amount here. Three years of food. I don't know why it's so imbalanced. I really need to fix that. Uh, if anything, we need... Well, we need a water recycler and then we'll be in better shape. Um, but yeah, they've got a lot of water. Maybe we should just rebalance that and get some more Delta V out of it. Because, of course, water is quite heavy. Now think about that. But uh, if we turn off these engines, let's say instead of using the nuclear engines to do the immediate boost, we use some of the ion engines. I just want to see what kind of Delta V we can get out of the ion engines while pushing the all the nuclear fuel, right? These will be full then. And it looks like 5,855. So we could probably have them share the work and maybe do the final bit with the nuclear engine. So we'll have one boost up one round with the ion engines and then replot and then and then try and do it with the nukes. So I'll see about that in the next video. We are going to get them going out there and then we'll see what else we need to send out. Anyway, lots to think about, but they're here. This is our crew from Mars, our first crew from Mars, these two. I don't know how it's going to go with them, but we'll find out. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.